What's up YouTube? MW Perry 2009 here, aka Sexy Dream Pirate. I finally talked the chaos into uh, throwing up a deck profile for his uh, mono light aggro control rally deck. It's it's a bit of everything, but so far it is the number one deck that I've had problems with just because of so many big blockers and it swings really, really hard. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and run camera and let the chaos proceed. What's going on guys? Uh, as he told you very much, he finally did bend my arm enough to get it going. I've been playing a lot of Dishonored lately, so I've really been whatever. So, because Dishonored's pissing me off tonight, I felt like doing something different. What I'm about to show you is, well, my monochrome light deck. Uh, pretty much what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to focus mainly on storm patrols because I like the whole blocker skirmisher thing. It pretty much allows me to pretty much control who's on the field at what time. So I'm going to go ahead and break into this without much further delay. Um, as you can probably tell by my how groggy my voice is, I'm fighting back a little something. So if I start hacking up a lung, don't worry, I'm not going to die. I hope. Okay, so first thing I'm running is so I got three Thunder Cruiser. Tap one for two, just right there off the bat, tapping one and you're getting 2,000 power, that's something awesome. But uh, as I'll show you here in a little bit, I'm running three Palladio, so that right there gives them the potential to have one for four, which is just phenomenal. The next thing I'm running, because I think these are the only copies we have, two Prism Blade Enforcer. Granted, now that these are Enforcer, they are Obviously up for that, well, what's his name? Halon. Halon whatnots. Uh, Paragon of Light, I think. I thought that was the normal 5 for 55. No, uh, it's just straight Halon is the 5 for 55. Okay, well, yeah, these guys are bait for Paragon of Light. But, hmm, I don't really care too much about the Enforcers. Like I said, I focus more on the Storm Patrol. But these guys are only of any use to anybody, I would think, if you're running a monochrome light deck. Because right now they're 2 for 15, but if you have a monochrome light deck, or granted you can somehow keep all mana in your field a, uh, as light, then they're 2 for 35 with blocker. So they can break a shield as well, which is freaking awesome. And continuing on, I have two Shock and Awe that are tap 3 for 2,000. Uh, not all that much powerful when it comes to the whole light thing, but... The cool thing about them is whenever they attack, you can choose a target and tap it. So right there, you can make it to where those guys can't be blocked. And, moving on. <clears throat> I'm also running three Star Lanterns. They're tap three for three. Best damn thing about these guys is once they block, they can tap a creature. I have already succeeded in pissing off Sexy Dream Pirate once. Because I managed to tap his trots, and, well, pretty much, I'm sure you've all had that player in D&D &D that threw his die before. That's almost what it was. <laughs> and then moving on, I have two Jade Monitors, three for four. As you can kind of see, I try to focus on my blocker skirmishers to be like, tap this and their power be a thousand extra. <clears throat> That's just because it allows me to do more of a control and spend less mana, because with Light, you pretty much have to run aggro. I mean, you can run a rally deck and just have a lot of low cost, but me and Dream Pirate here see eye to eye on the whole rally thing. Even I run one of them, and I have three rallies in my deck, but I think it's a punk fucking card, and it's a talent list. Basically, if anyone's ever played Super Smash Brothers on N64, and they have the hammer, you know very damn well what it is to be lucky. So, 3 for 4 Jade Monitor, pretty much at turn 3. With uh, already having 4,000 out in the field, it, whoever the hell you're facing is going to have a hard fucking time swinging over that. And another one of my favorites in the light world, Palladio. Four for 25, so even he can swing over 2,000 power. Uh, the best thing about him is he gives all the storm patrols an extra 2,000 power. And granted, I've only really faced Dream Pirate the most or Sexy Dream Pirate, whatever you guys want to call him. But um, <clears throat> pretty much if this card's on the field, and he, because this thing pretty much remains untapped throughout the entire game, just because I use him for support, if he pulls out a Death Smoke or a, 
Evos and to a Hydra Medusa or some shit like that. He's either going to have to choose between getting rid of Palladio, which is just insanely annoying, or Grand Gior, which I run three of him as well. And pretty much Palladio is always the first one to go, so it doesn't really phase me that much. Before he <coughs> before he goes on, I would just like to say, if you've ever faced a Grand Gior at 1,300 power and you couldn't pull a Terrapit or anything, Palladio can be, at, even though he's not, at, most of the time he's not really attacking, he can be a total game winner. It's, uh, you know, for Light to get a bump such as that and have so many blockers that are Storm Patrol, it's it's an excellent card. Excellent. But, yeah, I, I just wanted to throw that in there. And moving on here, I'm running two Razor Pine Trees. I almost said four. They are tap four for 25. And whenever they block, they can untap themselves at that exact moment and block again in the same turn. Another card I got Sexy Dream Pirate with once. It was a look of dumbfoundedness on his face. Whenever it happened, he hit me with a brain squirmer, and I blocked it. And he tried to hit me with something else. That wasn't that another 2,000 power, and I blocked that as well. And he just kind of looked at me, and I'm like, he can adapt himself. And he's like, well, fuck me. <laughs> Always fine. All right, then another one, very popular card. I don't watch many Kaijudo plays on YouTube or anything like that, but... From what I have seen, this guy always plays a big heart in any light deck. Keeper of Clouds. Good old 4 for 5. Anything with 5,000 attack, I give him, from what I've played against people, is considered a heavy hitter. And just fucking awesome. Plus, he's Storm Patrol. So with Palladio on the field, just a single Palladio, he's at 7,000. That right there takes care of a lot of Earth's heavy hitters, Darkness's heavy hitters. Hell, even fires heavy hitters. And that's just amazing. And then, secondly, we have current charger. He's walking at five for two. He's, he, I don't really use him for getting rid of stuff. Maybe, I've swung with, for game with current charger before. But the main reason I use him is because the ability to untap your creatures at the end of the turn it's just fucking amazing. It gives you that much more say over what the hell goes on on the field than anything else. <clears throat> okay, and next one up is a single, Keeper of Dawn. Uh, I was running two, but a little bit ago I just replaced him with a Raw Vu. Um, I was running two of him because A, he's Storm Patrol and he's a 5 for 4. He's not a blocker or anything like that. He's pretty much just a shield, which is actually a good thing because... As you've seen already with this deck, I have a shit ton of blocker skirmishers, so that restricts me a lot on that actually progressing to win the game. So with him, it helps me with that, but the main reason I have him in there is because once he's put on the field, you can bring back a spell. So pretty much the, the only spell I would like to bring back is Storm Spark Blast. Because that right there, it, just, it can piss you the fuck off. Unless you're the one using it, then you're just smiling like a motherfucker. <clears throat> Next card I have is another single. It's Halon, Paragon of Light, the Evo. I only run one of him because I have very few enforcers in this deck. And I wanted a damn Evo. So, fuck off. <laughs> Alright, and the next one. Running two. Once again, I've seen these in a lot of dark decks. And I know why I have. <clears throat> Five for six, Keeper of Twilight. With a Palladio boost, he's at fucking 8k, which is awesome. That combined with a lot of the mat with the, a lot of the uh, magic cards and light, where it allows you to tap enemy creatures. Fuck yeah, you'll seriously mess some shit up with this guy. And then next, now we're starting to enter the top sixes, so shit's about to really get crazy. Right here, I'm running two Astanos the Cloud Knight, both of which are double breakers. Uh, the main reason for that, like I said, is because I'm lacking in the ability to destroy shields. So these guys take care of that, and with them being Skyforce champions, it allows me to bring out something better. Okay, once again, I got two more Skyforce, six for six, both of which are double breakers. A good old Starlight Strategist. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. One of the other cool things about him is once he enters the field, you can tap an enemy creature. So right there, one of the biggest things I'll do, a combo I like to favor, is 
If I have Grand Gear out in the field and bring in Str Starlight Strategist, bring him in there, tap something big, and Grand Gear will take it the fuck out. Okay, and this is uh, one of the super rare, super rares I was all too happy to find, or I'm sorry, Perry Six or Dream Pirate was. All these cards are from his collection. I don't have a whole lot of money, so I try not to spend as much as when I can. But this is a single Evo Ravu the Stormbringer. Look at it. Just, just, just love it. <laughs> all right, fucking the top six. All right, just six. All right, think Bullshack Dragon. Only this guy's at eleven fucking thousand. Okay, and not only does he get that, he's a double breaker. And at the end of all, at the end of each of the turns, you get to untap all your creatures as well. And as an added benefit to that, all of your creatures, as long as he's on the field, are considered blockers. Now, the biggest drawback to that is Comet Missile. Alright, that'll, that's the worst fucking thing. You get Rabu on the field, and you're like, fuck yeah, I finally did it, and, count Marshall. Bye, Rabu. So, that's the drawback. But, fuck it. It's just, it, it's nice just getting his ass out on the field. The biggest thing I can tell you to do is when you get him out on the field, <clears throat> don't smile too much or anything like that. Just look at your opponent and look in their eyes. <laughs> just, that right there will make a common missile worth it. <laughs> Next up, this is definitely one of my just all-time favorites. I think in I think in the entire Kaijudo DM blah 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 geeky game cards. Grand Gear Tower Keeper, tap six for nine k. Blocker Scrammer sure. I can't tell you how fucking much of a safety pillow this guy is when he gets on the fucking field. Every time I put him on there, I feel like I'm in a safe fortress made of. Bubble wrap and star foam. <laughs> Next up, we have Ravu, Seeker of Lightning. Stormbringer's cousin, I guess. But he's at tap 7 for 65, so he's not quite hitting as much as all the other ones. But he's a blocker, which is cool. You know, don't get me wrong about that, it's always something cool. But he's also a double breaker, and he has the ability to untap himself at the end of everything. So basically... Double break, untap, and then he can block somebody, which is awesome. Everyone loves a good blocker. <clears throat> and then next up, I have Radiant the Lawbringer. This is the only copy we have. That's why I only have one copy. Uh, I'm running a lot of single copies in here because we only have one copy. But he's a 7 for 95 double breaker. Just straight up, raw, make you win the game faster. And then next up, another single. Get used to this. We have a tap 8 for 6,000, Earth the Overlord. This guy's, I haven't played him many times because he's a tap 8, and, well, I'll bring out Radiant before I'll bring him out. But, depending on the way the field looks, if you're going up against a Rush deck, or a, basically anything has anything to do with aggro, and, you know, where they're focusing more on firepower than defense, get his ass out there because he will decimate. He will tap everything that is not a blocker, and <clears throat> there you go. That's a field wipe right there. That's a base that's pretty much closest damn thing to a storm spark blast with a body. <clears throat> Next up, one card that I was very fucking happy to see. Tap 9 for 10,500 Orion. Our little celestial dragon, he's a double, he's a double breaker. Let me see. I haven't familiarized myself with this card. I rarely ever get to bring him out. As soon as he enters the field, you get to tap three target creatures. And whenever he gets banished, you pull three cards from the top of your deck. And if they're monsters, they immediately enter the battlefield. So that right there means that if they decide that if your opponent's like, fuck Orion, you can be like, naha, vengeance. And that's actually a pretty good deterrent to, getting, to making your opponent not want to get rid of Orion. Hmm. All right, that about does it for the monsters. Hmm. Moving on to spells. Yeah, monsters, spells. That's how I roll. <clears throat> First two we have is Sunshock, Shield Blast, Half Enemy Creature. Uh, I actually find these guys are more useful from playing from my hand. It allows me to strategize a lot better. I've actually had these things pop up in shield blasts a shit ton, and they've just been pointless. 
pretty much the one thing that hit me that knocked the shield blast is, is already tapped, so it doesn't make a bit of a difference. So I guess in that case, mana. And next we have a little something something called Portal Tech. It's a tap five. Uh, pretty much makes three of my creatures unblockable, which is good. And then next up we have Helios Rings. Basically Sun Shock with an upgrade. Tap five. It's a, also a shield blast. Uh, you'd, uh, it allows you to tap two enemy creatures. And these next couple ones are wet, and I'd like to know why. Hmm. I don't know. Alright. <coughs> <coughs> next three we have here are Rally the Reserves. Anyone that runs a light deck knows this. Pretty much, for all you that don't know what it does, it makes it to where your blocker, skirmish, blocker skirmishers can attack normally. So that right there gives you the ability to just, in one turn, game. I, like I said before, I think this is a talentless card. The main reason why I'm running three in here is because if, I, if, if the Light Civilization were to not have Rally the Reserves, playing a Light deck would be straight up fucking boring and, well, me and Pirate over here have actually come across this before. Um, I was just charging my rallies, or he was discarding them. I didn't really give a shit because I didn't want to use them. The game went on for probably 45 fucking minutes, and his deck was down to four cards. All right, and that is just no way to win a duel or even end a duel. At the end of it, me and him were both just like, God damn it, I wish one of us would win. Break time. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. It, it was just awful. So I keep three of those in there to where pretty much it keeps things moving. You know what I mean? If you have 17 monsters on your side of the field and none of them can attack, what the fuck is the point? All right, next three, my final three of my spells. And probably, I'm just, I love these. Storm Spark Blasts, running three of them. They're tap six with Shield Blast. It taps all your enemy creatures. There was actually one point in one duel where... We were doing the whole, didn't have rally being played, and pretty much it came down to we were measuring dicks. He had like t fucking ten monsters on his side, I had ten on my side, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> I drew a storm spark, played it, tapped all of his shit, and pfft, wiped it. And then shit was progressing. But basically that is what I'm running in my monochrome line. I believe I'm at 50 cards. I don't like to go anywhere above 50. I know Dream Pirate prefers his 40 card decks. Um, I feel with 50 it gives you more more options so you can, you know, kind of multi-class into something else. Uh, I, for the longest time I didn't want to do a deck profile for this because I feel this deck is imperfect. Mainly for the fact that I only have two Evo monsters in here. And I don't have shit for Enforcers. If I had, if we had the Evos, I would focus on Skyforce Champions in here, because they would be the only thing. But, at the same time, there is no such thing as a useless card, because if you have a useless card, that card goes into mana. And that saves you from making a very difficult decision. Alright, that's pretty much all I got. You got uh, any thoughts on any any decks that would give you problems or? Uh, uh, well, um, any deck you run, simply because you're better at this damn game than I am. Pretty much, no matter what deck I've ran, I've always been spanked on the ass and called Sally and you know go to my bedroom, suck my thumb, cry a little bit, and then later on shower with a metal scourge pad and just <laughs> scrape the scent of shame off myself. But <clears throat> um, pretty much the I would think the deck that would give you the most difficult. I've ran against, you know, Sexy Dream Pirates Rush deck, and you would think that a Rush deck would be the end of a monochrome light because everything costs so much, but in all honesty, I didn't run into that problem at all. The biggest problem I think a monochrome light would have is against a monochrome darkness because you're running aggro, meaning if you draw a card and you, and you want to get this card out, you're keeping it in your goddamn hand. And... What does Darkness do? They specialize in destruction. So you're going to be discarding and discarding and discarding and discarding. And I can tell you from experience, I've had times in my hand where um, he's had, where Dream Pirates had like Yigistan or some shit out in the field. And 
it's come to the point where I know what, what he's going to do to fuck me over. So, like, I'll have this card here, which I could summon right now, or charge for mana and summon this card next turn. But I already know what the fuck's going to happen. So, I could, like, if I were to summon that one, he's going to hit with Gigastan, and this one's going bye-bye. So what do I do? I, su I charge Mr. Awesome card and then summon the other one and just deny him the ability to discard. That's about all that I can do. So that is... Granted, uh, granted I haven't gone up against a monochrome water or earth, so for that I don't know. But I would think... Uh, I would think water and darkness would be the only ones that are... Any issue for that? Well, simply the ability to bounce, and these guys don't really have much area for mana ramp, so you're just gonna, yeah, I gotta do it again, gotta do it again, do it again, do it again. Yeah. And with Earth, uh, pretty much with Earth, all I can say is, they'll have the ability to swing over something, but once they swing over that one thing, you're gonna have a low level blocker that's just gonna and take it out next turn. Mm hmm. Um, do you have any, any thoughts on some of the new Evo Fury cards, uh, specifically the big stuff that everybody's talking about, like Emperor Neuron 3 for 5k unblockable, uh, that's the water one that's getting a lot of hype, uh, Evo Fury Tats, Triple Breaker, uh, uh, any thoughts on, you know, any of those cards, or any cards in Evo Fury that you just thought were absolutely for not phenomenal <coughs> or even broken? Uh... Not really. For the most part, I don't pay too much attention to the shit I don't have in front of me. But, uh... I'll say this. You know, Evo Tats and all these other guys sound good in theory, but from anybody that's ever actually tried something from theory and practice, there's a big fucking difference. What might, what might seem absolutely flawless in theory will be a complete and total botch in practice. So, for that, that's just a matter of experience. Okay. All right. Well, that was the Chaos's Mono Light Aggro Control Rally. Maybe the Hobbity Smorgasbord uh, of bullshit. Gonna try and maybe maybe post some duels between you know my Evo Rush and that deck. Uh, overall, I've ran I've ran against that deck quite a bit, and that's actually <coughs> the deck type that gives me the most problem is something with a lot of big blockers. But uh, anyways, uh, you know, I'm going to try and post some stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, until next time, keep gaming.